Now I'd like to go on to the next graphic and let's linger on this one a moment because this is worth looking at. This is a very strange pair of images. These are two images. They were taken 12 days apart and this just happened. I mean, this is going on right now. This is where Opportunity is currently parked. And you can see 12 days apart, a rock just simply appeared. On January 8, 2014, a strange Mars rock was spotted by Opportunity, resting in a spot where earlier there was nothing but soil. The rock, which scientists now call Pinnacle Island, is in the shape of a donut, white on the outside, red in the middle. It appeared after Opportunity had just finished a short drive. It looks like a jelly donut, said Steve Squires, the rover's lead scientist at Cornell University in Ithaca during a recent NASA event, marking Opportunity's 10th year on Mars. It appeared, it just plain appeared at that spot, and we haven't driven over that spot. Strangely, NASA has remained pretty silent in regards to the details of the find for the past few years, only recently coming forward to claim they had solved the mystery of its sudden appearance, claiming the rover had indeed disturbed the rock somehow. The odd rock is located in a spot on Murray Ridge, along the wall of Endeavour Crater where Opportunity spent the Martian winter. A closer look at the rock using Opportunity's robotic arm-mounted instruments has revealed, quote, it's like nothing we ever seen before. It's very high in sulfur, very high in magnesium. It has twice as much manganese than anything we've seen on Mars, said Squires with excitement during an event in January. I don't know what any of this means. We're completely confused, but we're having a wonderful time, he stated. Squires said rover scientists have two working theories on how the Pinnacle Island rock mysteriously appeared near Opportunity. One suggests that the rock is a piece of debris from a meteorite impact somewhere near the rover that just so happened to land in front of Opportunity. While the other theory is that the rock was somehow kicked up by one of rover's six wheels during its recent drive. This is regardless of Squire's original comment regarding the rover not having previously traversing that particular area. Did something actually throw this very interesting and possibly extremely important rock in the rover's direction? We already have the rover's mysterious cleaning events, which have occurred on many occasions. With every strange event that occurs on Mars, the possibility of outside help from an intelligent entity becomes less absurd. Did an alien or possibly covert astronauts throw us a bone in the form of a stone? We may never know where the rock came from, but we should all be thankful the rover found it. Squires said the weird Mars rock is an example of how the red planet keeps surprising scientists even 10 years later. He finished by saying, quote, Mars keeps throwing new things at us. As always, thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care. There are many strange anomalies floating around our vast solar system, many places in which aliens could be hiding. The Mars monolith, for example, found upon the surface of the moon, Phobos, a dying moon which not only due to its apparent calculated age should have crashed into the Martian surface many hundreds of millions of years ago, but from certain angles appears to be hollow. What else could be hiding within this strange dying moon, or indeed elsewhere? Are the rumors true of a close encounter, one experienced by none other than that of Neil Armstrong, who according to the tale, whilst on the lunar surface, switched to the medical frequency to state, and I quote, they are already here, they are watching us from the side of the crater. Could there really be an ancient alien civilization hiding somewhere near to our planet? One which has not only shown themselves to the first man on the moon, but are secretly hiding within our own solar system perhaps in an effort to spy on the development of our rare and very special planet. It would seem that, according to recent studies, although Phobos is a hot candidate for proof of intelligent life beyond our own planet, the truest likely candidate is actually that of Miranda, one of Uranus's moons. Tom Nordheim, a planetary scientist at Maryland's Johns Hopkins Physics Laboratory, analyzed the moon's environment using imagery captured in 1968 by Voyager 2, a spacecraft launched way back in 1977. Researchers were attracted to the moon initially due to the erratic patterns witnessed upon its surface, which were the product of tidal forces and temperature fluctuations. The team feels that if life is to be found anywhere within the radius of our own star, it would undoubtedly be within these vast alien oceans. And although the search would inevitably be for primitive marine creatures, the rising numbers of alien craft being identified either over or submerging beneath large bodies of water, 
makes the possibility that these unidentified submerging objects could also be utilizing the moon's vast oceans as the perfect outpost for any extraterrestrial surveillance of Earth. Not just a mere conspiracy theory anymore, becoming a legitimate field of research due to the anomalous behavior of these unknown craft, craft which are clearly already hiding here upon our planet. A vast portion of the ocean is now believed to still be liquid, thus the possibility of there being some form of submerged base, which in turn is using the ocean to effectively hide from our photography, is now something which is being taken more and more seriously. It would seem that it would be more a case of when, rather than if, we will ever discover intelligent life beyond Earth's atmosphere. We may even discover that they are far closer than we could have ever imagined. It is a journey which we find highly compelling. Why did we never go back to the moon? Undoubtedly, man's greatest achievement, a feat which has apparently never been attempted again. There are many conspiracy theories surrounding the moon missions, some for good reasons and others not so. A mission to the moon, or indeed Mars, should be an experience which unites humanity under a common goal. Yet, alas, this unity rarely occurs. It is a well-known fact that knowledge is power, yet unfortunately this fact can often breed deceit and deception. For it is believed by some that knowledge only makes one powerful when it is concealed from another regardless of whether this always be accurate within reality. Because of this system of accumulating and protecting power, space-going nations have gone to tremendous efforts to conceal things from the public, and indeed each other. The United States government, for example, demands astronomers, astronauts, and many other workers at NASA sign an oath of confidentiality. Upon breaking this oath, you could face a conviction of treason, a crime which carries the death penalty. However, regardless of this, over the past few years, more and more individuals from around the world have bravely began to blow the whistle on these secrecies. Dr. Ken Johnston, former director of NASA's Department of Photographic Evidence, has stated that during his stay at the agency, he was able to see original photos of countless ruins, pyramids, and intact temples all resting upon the moon. Not only are there now a number of independent testimonies, made by numerous figures from within these space agencies, and the accompanying programs, confessing to the concealment of ancient ruins on the moon's surface, but we also have compelling physical evidence of such structures, including photographs released by NASA themselves. One was snapped by the Apollo 17 astronauts in 1972. Subsequently uploaded to the official NASA website, it was originally labeled as overexposed. However, as technology has evolved and computer software has become more inept at refining images, it has revealed something amazing. Along with apparent pyramidal structure, clearly seen within this image, some investigators have also highlighted a possible monolith in the foreground. Was Space Odyssey trying to tell us something? Predictably, many people have come forward attempting to discredit this discovery. Yet fortunately for us, in the December of 2008, the Hubble Space Telescope took some extremely intriguing images of its own. Images which seem to corroborate the once overexposed Apollo photo. Do these images actually show ancient ruins upon the surface of the moon? If this is the case, how did they get there? Or more importantly, who could have built them? Are these relics proof of an ancient space-going civilization? Or maybe extraterrestrial activity? Regardless of how they got there, we find their existence highly compelling and could be perceived as a possible motive for turning the space programs into black projects. Maybe we did go back to the moon. It's just most were never told about it. After all, knowledge is power. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. There are many unexplainable ruins upon our planet whose age, or indeed true origins, are still an enigma to be unraveled. However, we feel that thanks to ours and many others' astute and devoted research, we do now have a very thorough understanding of past lost civilization's capabilities. In some areas, there is undoubtedly more than one advanced ancient phase of building work. For instance, we feel that the ancient pyramids of Giza 
ancient relics photographed from almost every angle, now, thanks to alternative research and in-depth scientific investigations, shows clear indication of at least three phases. These three phases are also possibly evident at many other ancient sites, in particular Peru. What's important regarding these phases is that although they have undoubtedly been accomplished at vastly different times in history, they are all incredibly advanced. In fact, they are far more advanced than any ancestral attempts to recreate them, which can be found throughout our own thoroughly academically documented history. This throws up some controversial implications. For example, did this ancient civilization, just like ours, develop to a point where they were capable of space travel? Or perhaps, a more interesting posit, were these most sophisticated and indeed ancient ruins left by a civilization who actually traveled here from another planet to begin with? Perhaps Mars? Since its discovery, Mars has been the subject of countless theories regarding the possibility of past life having once flourished upon its surface. There are even those who have proposed and relentlessly searched for an ancient advanced human civilization having once inhabited its red landscape. We have indeed shared a number of Martian theories, supported by compelling physical evidences from its surface including the mystifying cleaning events which have been experienced by each rover while still able to move on the planet. Although many of the most compelling, possibly ancient artifacts found upon the Martian surface have indeed been covered by numerous sleuths, we feel the following object's possible identity may have been overlooked. Pictured within a NASA image known as Sol 746, Presumably taken on the 746th day, it shows a perfect sphere resting in the red dust. Although noticed, its puzzling characteristics, surprisingly, have yet to be linked with one of the most recognizable UFO shapes of the modern age, the metallic sphere. These objects, not only witnessed, documented, and video recorded on nearly every continent on Earth, they have also been the object most often recorded on many inches of unexplained NASA footage from low Earth orbit, lunar, and now, we feel, much further afield. Could this mysterious sphere actually be a crashed metallic UFO? Although spheres appear in nature under the identification of land pearls, its origins would have involved tremendous amounts of water something that has not been seen on Mars for an extremely long time. Could this mysterious sphere, photographed by NASA, actually be that of a crashed metallic UFO? We find the proposition highly compelling. In our last video, we discussed the possibility of there being a secret colony on Mars, a colony made possible by modern technologies advances in sustainable agriculture and life-supporting artificial ecosystems, an apparent astronaut silhouette caught during one of the rover's unexplained cleaning events, and the resources such as water found upon the surface, making it an ideal candidate for such a mission. With running rivers, oceans, even possibly a thriving ecosystem, did we once call Mars home? If we did indeed once call Mars home, there would be undoubtedly ruins on its surface, rare surviving features that would still litter the landscape and over the years, countless possible examples of these have been spotted. And although many of these could be dismissed as mere cases of pareidolia, others are just too perfect, too precise in their appearance to simply be dismissed. Possible ancient relics of a lost Martian civilization. Ancient sarcophagi, heads of statues, pyramidal structures discovered to match star constellations in their layout, most notably that of a Pleiades constellation, located near the famous face on Mars, an enormous face often argued as having been nothing more than a trickery of light, this regardless of ancient texts, linking the face, the pyramids, and the constellational alignment to the burial requests of a supposed ancient Anunnaki king. Phobos is yet another curious anomaly of Mars, 
known to be in a continually decaying orbit. There are many features of this satellite which baffle astronomers and researchers alike. For example, when one calculates its orbit, they are shocked to find that this orbiting rock should have crashed into the Martian landscape many, many years ago. What's more, satellite imagery of its surface has captured images of a very mysterious anomaly on a number of occasions. A cuboid monolithic object with no impact crater resting upon its surface. Buzz Aldrin has even mentioned this anomaly, specifically calling it a monolith, also noting that he believed, quote, God put it there. Is Phobos's enigmatic orbit deliberate? A past attempt to draw our attention to it, subsequently discovering this monolith? Could it possibly hold undeniable proof of not only other life in the universe, but the past habitation of Mars itself? It is undoubtedly highly compelling. Habitation on the moon. We can visit other people with their habitation. We can keep track. If there's something very important to be developed from the moon, I'm not sure what it is right now. And I sure think we should identify what it is for America to make such gross expenditures again for human habitation on the moon. We can help. We can join with. Together, we can explore the moon and develop the moon. We should go boldly where man has not gone before. Fly by to comets, visit asteroids, visit the moon of Mars. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? Who put that there?